it's really cool to see this thing, to see the whole thing operating at once. This is a massive grain mill that contains a smaller grain mill. Up until now, we've only seen these massive, massive, massive six foot wide wooden gears turning, right? And you're so close to them, you, you can't see the whole apparatus. But here you can see the whole apparatus. So this is a mock-up of the whole mill. Um, this is, these are the blades of the windmill, right? And then inside you could see an approximation of what the mechanism would look like. Something to note is that even though this is complex and really amazing, all of the mills that we've looked at so far have had far more gears. They've had camshafts, um, they've had uh, gears that move in and out of place so that you can uh, engage and disengage different pieces of machinery. So this is just the simplified and stripped down version of what we've been seeing in all of these mills. Right, but uh, I mean you can, gosh, what are these types of gears called? I can't remember. This is a, it's not a bevel gear, but it's, it works like a bevel gear. Um, and, and each of these teeth is held in place by a nail, and they're all wooden teeth, right? When we do gears now, we'll make them out of steel, we'll make them out of titanium, out of aluminum, something like that. And, and here they are making these gears that are driving uh, life-saving and life-preserving pieces of equipment, and they're all made out of wood by hand. And that's just, oh, that's staggering, right? Um, so the wind blows drives that, transfers the horizontal rotational motion into vertical rotational motion. And then here you have uh, the, let's see, it should transfer the force so that the stone spins faster but with less force. Right? Uh-huh. Then that actually ends up driving the... And then of course down here you have the two millstones. That's a, that is astounding. That is wild. And then you need to remember that this thing is 10 feet tall in round numbers. Um, and each of these windmills, this windmill is especially tall. It's got to be, oh, I don't know, 50, 60 feet tall. And all the other windmills we've been looking at have been at least 40 feet tall. Wow. So do you get a sense of how large the equipment is inside these mills? I wonder if they would use things like this to mock up how they were going to design it. Huh. You know, that's an interesting question. That would, be, that would be fun to ask someone around here who knows, who knows their history. You know, now I'm wondering how small of one of these you can make. If you can make like a tiny little mock-up windmill, it's just like six inches tall, make very fine little gears. That sounds really cool. It's like a ships in a bottle, but a windmill, a windmill in a bottle. Now that would be interesting. It's really cool to see this thing to see the whole thing operating at once. Um, one of the problems with dealing with large pieces of machinery is that you can't always see all of it at one time and so you only see one small piece of it. Really, and like the whole planet is that way too. Like it's too big to be seen clearly because you're too close to it, right? And so to be able to stand back a little bit and see how the whole thing goes, that is just amazing. I, wow. Uh, you, can, you can't help but appreciate what a feat of engineering it is just to build something like this and then to scale it up uh, 50, or excuse me, scale it up to five times its size. That's just, that's even more incredible. I'm all geeked out, man. This is just, can't, can't even handle it. One of the other cool things that this windmill model teaches us is about the value of standing back. Now being engaged in things is super important, but there are some things that we can't see clearly until we sort of stand back from them. We're too immersed in them. If you've seen David Foster Wallace's videos or heard his speech about what is water, that's kind of what comes to mind is there's two fish swimming in the water, two young fish swimming in the water and an older fish comes past and says, you know, how's the water boys? And one of the younger fish turns to the other younger fish and says, what's water? And so the point is that there are some situations in life where you're too close to things to see them properly. The fish doesn't know anything about water because it's immersed in it, right? Uh, it's, it's like the air you breathe around you. You just take it for granted because it's always there and it's invisible. It's like the ground you walk on. The earth is too large to be seen clearly. And that's why we build scale models, to be able to take a step back and to be able to see the whole thing from a distance for a moment before then going back and getting inside one. Windmills mean things. Scale mechanical models mean things. If you like videos like this, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe to see more. Thanks.
So we're now on the third or fourth floor, and finally we found the millstones. This is the set of millstones that we have. Um, they're massive, and what's odd to me is that they're not in the center of the room. Over here we've got a couple of chutes, so evidently grain is being stored above us. And then, because it's a mill, we've got these ropes all over the place, which when tugs set various things and moving. Um, interesting thing over here, over here we've got a, um, a gripper. Now this thing would be tied to a rope and then you grab a bag of grain and it, the weight of the grain would cause it to hold on very tightly. There would also be a winch powered by the windmill itself. The, the millwright would pull a cord and suddenly the bag of grain goes clear to the top to be ground down. And then it slowly works its way down through the mill on its way down. Oh look, a bunch of trap doors. This is where the grain came up. So is this used for hoisting? Is that the yes, here? if I'm not mistaken, and it would go up one further. Yeah. I hope there's some kind of winch up there. Yes. Because I would not want to lift anything up there. That would be powered I by the mill. myself lifting 50 pound sacks of grain up there all day? Yeah. Thanks, no thanks. <laughs> no, that would definitely be powered by the mill.